people, welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's now time to take a look at the papers this morning. Let's begin with a daily independent. The headline reads, uh, Be ruthless with bandits, Buhari orders security agencies. So all ask security operatives to crush criminals. Ondo doctors threaten mass resignation, proceed on strike. Also about the president's, he says, says shoot to order to shoot illegal AK-47 bearer still in force. I pub like a dot in a circle who will defeat them. Fighting corruption in democratic setting difficult. Buhari asked youth to behave themselves if they want jobs. Buhari's Arise television interview, deplorable. That's according to the PDP. Also on the Daily Independent newspaper, CBN set to launch digital currency. Buhari flags off $1.5 billion Lagos Ibadan rail line. After Twitter ban, FG joins coup. Buhari wants autonomy for state judiciary, legislature, Malami insists. Herdsman kill 11 in fresh attacks on two Bainway communities, several missing, a known number of women abducted. U.S. ask FG to reverse Twitter ban. And lastly, Mwachuku now army spokesman, Musa Northeast Theatre Commander. The Nigerian Tribune uh, comes next. After eight hours meeting, OBJ, Abdul Salami, Orni, and Sultan, others to meet Buhari. Afenifere, Oanez and Digbo, ACF and NLC leaders in attendance. In security, our people are now afraid to visit their farms, says Fayami and El Rufai. Buhari moves to resuscitate cattle roots and uh, grazing reserves. Declares IPOB is like a dot in a circle. It has nowhere to go. Tells governors to secure their estates. Uh, PDP Afenifere fault the president. Also, the restriction of Nigerians from reporting and disseminating information has no place in a democracy. United States tells uh, federal government. Undo Partners uh, firm uh, commences uh, a 5.5 billion hour LPG terminal. Catholic bishops want Sharia law removed from 1999 constitution. Again, suspected headsmen abduct four on Lagos Ijebo Day Road, kill 11 in Benue. We can also find on the, punch, on the Tribune this morning, Oyo PDP, ex-deputy uh, governor, uh, Akombi, Babalola, others call for dissolution of party exco. And uh, recovered assets, federal government opens bid, over 2,000 auctioners apply. Uh, and finally, reps move to bar bank employees from operating foreign accounts. These are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. On the Punch newspaper, Buhari pushes rotation deal to APC. Oyegun insists on zoning. Nobody should sit in Lagos and decide power rotation. That's according to President. Local governments have been killed. Chairmen com compromised. Buhari laments. CBN's digital currency will begin before 2022. That's according to the Bankers Committee. U.S. flays Twitter ban. FG's threats of prosecution. CDS meets military chiefs, prepares 70 generals for exit. Costs 36 members on list, proceed on annual leave June. In security, Abbasanjo Abdul Salami, Sultan, others brainstorm, meet Buhari today. Ohanezi, others tackle president over threats of Southeast dump down. My directive to shoot criminals with AK-47 stands, that's according to Buhari. FG declares Monday holiday for Democracy Day, preaches peace. Federal government begins moves to sell looters seized assets. Army, police, NSCDC ensure force in Oshun over planned protest. Motorists. Commuters groan as robbers take over Lagos Bridge. Power drunk DSS men batter punchman and UJ blows hot. And lastly on the punch newspaper, the president says we'll link Lagos rail line with Niger Republic. All right, and now on the Guardian, President Buhari, the federal government will reclaim grazing routes for headers. Security on high alert ahead of June 12 protests. The National Assembly opposes scrapping of NYSE, gets Buhari's commendation. Northern Coalition seeks suspension of a constitution review for referendum on Biafra. 
And also, Africa needs 225 million more COVID-19 vaccines to meet coverage target. Presidency stands, forces Obasanjo, Sultan and others into closed-door parley. That the DSS operatives and policemen brutalize journalists in Abuja. All right, I think we're just going to go straight into it. Jide Johnson, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Good morning to our right. viewers all over the world. The, Thanks. The, Thanks for joining us. The story us. that caught my attention most is after eight hours, um, about some job to Salam on me meeting they are going to meet Buhari today. Does he have to take the meeting of this eminent Nigerian for the president to call um, the, the, the state council meeting? There is a provision in the constitution that provides that a body that includes an advisory body that includes all the chief justices of the federation all former Head of states to regularly advise the president on the state of the nation. We shouldn't have gotten to this state before that meeting takes place. And I think that it's under this present administration that we have had an hazard approach towards having that, that meeting. I hope that the president will take to the advice of this group that cuts across the length and breadth of Nigeria, and these are eminent personalities, traditional rulers, and former head of state and president of the federal of the federal republic. Because this nation need an intervention beyond divine intervention. There is the need for us to do things by ourselves to solve some of our problems. And if you check from the rhetoric coming from the president, either from his interview or from his responses to questions, or from statements from his administration. Uh, the issues that needed urgent attention are not uh, probably been addressed. And also, we could see that there is an incorrect approach towards solving this problem. And the president, we elected the president. One of the news um, items you took the president said he doesn't want to go against his attorney general. We elected the president, we did not elect the attorney general. So the president knows what is best for the nation. So I think that in, the, in this meeting today, it will be frank and the issues affecting Nigeria will, will be treated. Okay, Mr. Jide Johnson, that statement he made regarding not wanting to contradict his attorney general, um, you know, that is a story reflected on the Guardian newspaper and the rest, saying Buhari on the Guardian, FG will reclaim grazing roads routes for herders. So basically, in that interview, um, that 44-minute long interview uh, with Pressman two days ago, the president said he had told the Attorney General that he needed to go dig up the laws practiced during the First Republic, such that, you know, the, the grazing routes that were used during the First Republic to move cows in se to several parts of the country would be used. Basically saying that he, do not, he does not agree with the ban on open grazing by the 17 Southern Governors. Really, uh, what's your thoughts regarding this? It would be very interesting if you could go back to the First Republic. Then the issue of what we are talking about concerning them, the structuring, the structure is already structured appropriately. We are operating a regional government then with each region having control over its own finances, having control over its own police, having control over a lot of it. It would be very interesting. So it should not be limited to others. I think that uh, once it comes to it as the president um, uh, thinking is different from when it comes to Nigeria. I'll be glad if you look at in, into that and then we we'll revert back to that so that we, in fact, we cancel 1999 constitution and we we'll revert back to, to, to those laws, to, to, to the 1963, 1960-63 um, constitution. And then we, 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 we we will, we will have all the agitations will be, will be dealt with in terms of resource control, in terms of fiscal federalism, in terms of so many things that people that are clamoring for restructuring, that will address it. However, you can imagine if the president is only thinking for others, 
If you see the dominant feature of his interview is Edas, we reclaim grazing route for Edas. What about reclaiming um, 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 the pyramids for farmers in the north? The Google the coconut, uh, the, the granite pyramids for farmers in the north, the cocoa uh, warehouses for farmers in the south. Why must it be limited to those in animal laws boundary? And what's the responsibility and what's the role of federal government in looking at people operating their private business? When is he going to do something for spare part dealers? When is he going to do something for people selling textiles in in, in Okiani market in Lagos, all the textile companies in Ikeja, they have gone to Ghana. We are importing textiles from India, from other parts of the... What is he going to do for Ikeja industrial estate? What is he going to do concerning Lupedu industrial estate? And he's thinking about Edas alone. Are Edas the only owners of business enterprise in this country? Well, God, we have... Well, the president just had two years left in his administration. He just had two years. He will not be president forever. And if he has that thinking that, okay, my policies will be to affect some certain group of people, I think he should have an understanding that this administration does right. have two years. Bri briefly, I, I, want, I want you to quickly also, you know, go back to the meeting, the Obasan job, the Salami meeting. And what do you think they may have discussed in that meeting? It must have been the state. Look, I can, can you saw the president was in Lagos. You saw the security that was deployed in Lagos yesterday. If you deploy that level of security across board throughout the country, do you think we have the, the issue of insurgency? Just deploy that level of security around the southeast Boko Haram axis. What do you think will have happened to the Boko Haram um, um, issue? Now, different agitations going on left, right, and center in the country. You will recall that the president, the, the former president, Lucien Kabazojo, said Nigerians should not disintegrate. That there is a need it to it, it to be worse off if we disintegrate, particularly for minority groups, than what it is now. And you could see that some of the leaders are looking at areas in which some of these problems, the issue of agitation for self determination, the issue of state of insecurity in the country, these are issues that are of concern. To, to eminent personalities and leaders in Nigeria, and I'm sure that will form the bulk of what they are going to discuss mm -hmm. with the president. Whereas the president is concerned with 2023 election, talking about rotation will be left to APC. The president should not even be interested in politics. The president should focus on governance. What should be the focus of it? That should be the focus of president. Now it should be on governance. How to leave a lasting legacy, not to be troubled about whether there's rotation in APC or there's no rotation in APC, and someone will not sit down in Lagos for to decide whether APC will decide. And who is APC? APC is made up of its members. APC is made up of its constitution. It's very interesting. We could see that they brought out the gloves, fighting, talking about 2023, other than focusing on governance. My advice and my appeal to the president is for him to focus on governance and leave politics for those that are interested in 2023 presidential election or gubernatorial election. It's not going to contest any election come 2023. He should be concerned more about his, about his legacy, how he's going to preserve his own legacy, other than talking about... Um, okay. Maybe. All right, Mr. Mr. Jide Johnson, um, tomorrow is June 12th. It's a very significant day for Nigeria. It's the day of the June 12th, 1993 election that was adjudged as the freest and fairest ever in the country's history. It's also the day that uh, the presidency has declared uh, to be Democracy Day. And uh, on the Guardian newspaper, the headline reads that security is on high alert ahead of June 12th protests. So we're seeing that uh, there's likely to be protests in some parts of the country, and the federal government has deployed soldiers, the police, um, to prepare for a hitch-free Democracy Day celebration, asking security agencies to, um, you know, enforce roadblocks, stop and search in major cities to prevent mass actions. They're saying that Yoruba Nation agitators, Biafra agitators, they, they intend to hold rallies. Other people in Lagos also plan to hold rallies. So it seems like uh, a heated policy ahead of June 12 uh, a day. Re really, let's talk about the significance of tomorrow and if there's any need for these protests that are planned across the country. Uh, the, 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 the problem that I have is the seed mentality that we have in this democratic experience. 
we against them. And then um, um, to, to also note that we are in a civilian administration, not in democracy. Because if you are in democracy, uh, you don't bring about um, soldiers stopping people from protesting. And you don't see protest as a mutiny. When I listened to the interview of the president, I, I, I was shocked and I fear for my nation in the interpretation that was given to NSAS protest. NSAS protest by the president that it was people that want to remove him from government. In democracy, majority will always have their way, the minority will have their say. Now, part of having your say in democracy, in, even under the constitution, in terms of freedom of expression, is the right of self-expression, is the right to protest, not vandalization or to destroy property. Now, the way security agencies have been mobilized is not different to the way security agencies have always been mobilized while we were young, under military regime, and in Unilab then, when we used to protest for June 12, or to protest on, on the issue of increase in pump prices or petroleum product, or to protest on improving the welfare of Nigerians. So the way they mobilize security agencies, you will think that probably we are in a military in a military regime and not in a democracy. If indeed you value June 12, if there were no protest, if there were no democratic protest, anti-military protest, the present democratic experience that the president is enjoying, he will not enjoy it because in the first instance there won't be fought republic. So people protested against anti-democratic government, they protest against dictatorial tendencies of, of government, and that's why we are experiencing the democracy we are having today. No matter how hard they try to stop people from protesting or from people from agitation, from agitation, you can't stop agitation. It's just a matter of time. People will make a demand for their rights. We make a demand for what they want their society to be. So mobilizing soldiers, doing freaks, searches, doing stop and search, stopping people from going about their normal business, even in democracy, which a day you come to be democracy day, and you are trying to bring military into picture, shows that you don't have democratic democratic antecedents. Mm. Right. And I want to appeal Talk to Nigerians, and I want to appeal to those that want to go about the <clears throat> protest tomorrow. Be peaceful about it, be vigilant about it, and we are still looking at the issue of answers there's no end. We, we, we got an inkling to why. Nobody can now deny the fact that allegedly soldiers were released because in Mutney, once there is a Mutney, you use military to quell Mutney. You use military to quell Mutney. And we heard from the president in his own statement that uh, I was told that those boys that were protesting at the gate, they want to remove me from government. If people want to remove the president from government, would they go to Lucky Gate or they will face as a rock? Now you could check the intelligence of our security agencies you could check the interpretation to give they give to basic human right of freedom of expression of the right to make a demand from your government in a democracy which is government of the people by the people and for the people so in democracy it is centered around the people it is the people that determines the type and style of governance and in that type of democracy some security agencies are giving intelligence to the president that when people gather to protest, they want to remove him from government. Yeah, so so why, uh, Jenny Johnson, help, help us understand, you know, why that is. Is, is it, you know, because somebody may have uh, painted a wrong picture to the president um, or that's simply the way it, they chose to color it um, so that, you know, protesting can that's, be, can that's, be quelled? That's, that's the interpretation, that's the intelligence that was given to the president. That's the intelligence. That's the intelligence that was given to the president concerning the protest. And as far and as far as that's wrong intelligence. In actual sense, the youth are protesting for better welfare for police. You are protesting for for in, in uh, uh, to for government to address the insecurity issue in the country. You are protesting for good governance. They were, they, they were even helping the government to set agenda for the government in governance, not to bring about an end to the government. Instead of government to tap into the intelligence and the resource of the youth, we sent soldiers after them. And, and, and it's based on the intelligence that 
we have because any society, any government will not tolerate mutiny. Any government will not tolerate mutiny. And okay. if, it's, if it's interpreted as mutiny, what do you think will be the the, the reaction of, of security agencies? As far as I'm concerned, who are those that are advising our president? They are doing a lot of disservice to this nation. If right. the Mr. focus of the attorney general of the federation is on gracing rules and not about bringing about an extant law, or now we can deal with kidnappers, or now we can deal with bandits, or now we can deal with insurgents, then you know what type of what type of advice are people surrounding the president giving to the president? Okay, uh, um, Mr. Yeah. J.D. Johnson, I want us to wrap up with uh, this news about the, the economy. And uh, still the presidency yesterday said that um, he plans to link the Lagos Rail Line with Nigeria Republic. And his explanation here is that this would, you know, this is, this is me quoting him now, saying, this vital line establishes an end-to-end -end logistics supply chain in railway transport, that this would make sure that goods are uh, transported freely from a papa port, you know, going all the way straight to um, Nigeria Republic, that this would basically help Nigeria's economy in terms of import and export. Um, how do you see it, connecting the rail lines to Nigeria Republic? Well, um, are we connected? If you are bringing a satellite, uh, uh, West African or so if you are connecting to uh, to to Nigeria Republic, why not Lagos to Ghana? Now when you have Lagos to Ghana, Lagos to Ghana, you go through Republic of Benin, you go through you go through Togo, you go then you get to Ghana. Or are we doing are we connecting from Calabar to Port, to, to, to Cameroon to build a hub? If you see the justification the, the president provided for the Nigeria Republic line, it's so myopic. So, so, so myopic and so primordial that because there are relatives in in in, in Niger Republic, because there are houses and canoes in Niger Republic, that's why we are doing the railway to, to those places. Why can't we do it to Republic of Benin? Why can't we do it to? Why can't Ecowas come together and do a railway network up? Even railway has not gotten to the left and bread of Nigeria. We are connecting that to Niger Republic. It has not gotten to to to. To, to, to some states in Nigeria by connecting it to, to, to Nigeria Republic. I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that idea. I'm not in support of that idea. I think we should integrate Nigeria first. And if you want to do railway to Nigeria Republic, what's the economic value of Nigeria Republic? Compare the economic value of Nigeria Republic to the economic value of Ghana to Nigeria. Let's look at it in terms of, in terms of comparative advantage. What economic value? What goods and services are imported from, from Nigeria Republic? What are, what bilateral relationship do we have in terms of trading with 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 the J Republic right. compared to Ghana? Today Johnson. I think we should be thinking of of doing a railway from Nigeria to Ghana and not from Nigeria to the J Republic. All right, Judy Johnson. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here this morning. this morning. Thank you so much for starting our Friday for us, yes. and uh, we wish you a great uh, day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Always yeah. great to see Mr. G.D. Johnson all fired up, yeah. ready to, you know, just analyze the papers and make sense of, you know, what the newspapers are saying. You're making really strong points, uh, you know, some of the things that he also mentioned. Yes, really. Um, I, I, I was definitely going to ask, what would Nigeria stand to gain from a Nigeria to Niger um, Republic rail line? And he basically unbonded that to say, we have much more to gain. <clears throat> a bigger pardon from other West African neighbors. And I feel that really should be our focus. What do we stand to gain? Yeah. Because any nation should be able to take decisions that is in its national interest. Not to say we have cousins and first cousins in Nigeria Republic. Yeah, let the Nigerian government take care of those in Niger. We'll take care of the ones here. You know, that's, and that's what assigns, the focus you know, should the, be. The economic uh, benefits um, you know, with other co neighboring countries uh, that will, you know, be a lot more beneficial to Nigeria. Uh, shouldn't we be spending every single penny on Nigeria and, you know, building infrastructure in Nigeria uh, than bothering about, um, you know, Niger Republic? So there's a lot of things that just don't, you know, make sense, just don't add up, you know, somehow, some way. But um, somehow, you know, there's going to be some excuse for it, you know, that mm. people like try to force you to believe um, is, is right or is true and all of that. Well, all right. I don't know. Short break. We'll be back. Uh, what happened on this day in history? I'm going back to the year 1955 yes. to tell you of one of the worst sporting disasters ever. And I'm going to the year 2010 to tell you about when South Africa made history in sports in Africa.